When discussing cells, surface area to volume ratio is a very important concept to get an understanding of. So first looking at surface area and volume. Length is simply just a distance between two points. Area is a squared term, typically length times width. And our volume here is a cubic term, length times width times height, or it could be depth. Different shapes will give you different, um, basically, surface areas and volumes, depending on their size. And you can see here the, the comparison of area to volume, the area to volume, and how these different shapes create these different ratios. And that's what we're going to look at a little bit here. So first off, why are cells so small? This is a basic question. How come we're not just one big cell? I'll put a link to both of these um, YouTube videos. Uh, this first one here is a great job of explaining uh, certain things, and it goes over the um, agar cube experiment, which has to do with the diffusion of certain components in different size cubes or blocks here. So first off, cell size. Cell sizes range from one millimeter down to one micrometer. Either way, they're still very small. The reason why this is, is cells need a large surface area of plasma membrane to adequately exchange materials. So what we see here is in our um, small intestine, we have these villi, these kind of finger-like structures you can kind of see. And what that allows is a lot of surface area. This is important because this helps and aids in the ability for nutrients to be able to diffuse across the membrane. So I have the picture of here of a paper, it's just flat and the paper that becomes more and more folded. We're increasing the surface area here, allowing for easier to exchange materials. So you can think about just had a solid area, very limited area you can have contact with. We should take that same area and I put all my fingers up now. Now we have all these areas here and that allows for a lot more surface area. This diffusion process, the reason why this is important is our cells, in this case, red blood cells, example here, are taking in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. Diffusion is spontaneous, meaning there's no energy investment that's required for the net movement of particles down a concentration gradient. So just as we put a drop of food dye here, it diffuses throughout all the water. Simply using the molecular motion of the water molecules here, it diffuses or it moves across the food dye. Same thing here in our cells with diffusion, oxygen is freely able to come in, CO2 is freely able to leave. There's no energy required. Very important for cells. So if they have this great surface area to volume ratio, this can occur spontaneously, no energy required, which means that life can continue because there's not a lot of demand for energy for this purpose. We call this the surface area to volume ratio. And this is because of this, it requires cells to be small. So again, here's our small intestine, and we see these kind of finger-like projections. Now, these are all cells, all lining these entire um, peaks and valleys. But we see zoomed in here of our villi, we actually have microvilli, so we have increased surface area even within the cells. And this is really what helps us absorb um, our food much more efficiently. Large cells, surface area relative to volume ratio decreases. Volume of the living cytoplasm, that's the inner portion of the cells, which demands nutrients and produces waste. We've got to exchange those two. Cells specialize in absorption, um, utilize membrane modifications such as microvilli, example here, to greatly increase the surface area to volume ratio. The picture of the feather here, because the feather is very high surface area to volume ratio. A lot of fine, fine hairs here. It's kind of the same concept we're trying to get to understand here on our microvilli. So, example here, we have the same surface area, but we're changing the volume. As we take that paper and we're folding it, we're increasing the volume. So we're changing that ratio of surface area to volume. Starting off, our surface area at the beginning and end is actually the same, but our volume is changing dramatically. And this is what's affecting uh, the ability for cells to exchange nutrients. So what's this look like mathematically? So I have three cubes here. Um, one cube is just a solid block. This one, uh, we could see our individual cubes here. There's basically um, eight of them. And here we have many more. I want you to think about each of these individual cubes as having their own um, independent kind of surface area and volume. Yes, they're all stacked up together here, but think of them as independent. So looking at comparison all three of these initially, if we take the volume, which is simply the height times the width times the length, um, number of cubes, we come up with the same number. So all three of these are the same volume. 
What you're noticing that's different here is those the surface area. This is one big block as a result as a relatively small surface area, in this case 96 centimeters cubed. This one has eight two centimeter cubes, and this is 192 centimeters squared. This one has the many blocks, there's actually 64 if you count them all here, and they're only one centimeter cubes. This has a surface area, total surface area, of 384 centimeters squared. When we do the ratio out, which is surface area over volume, we're noticing our surface area divided by our volume, we come up with a 1.5 to 1 ratio. Here it's a 3 to 1 ratio, and here it's a 6 to 1 ratio. The higher the number here, 6 to 1 would be the highest, the greatest chance that diffusion can occur throughout the entire cell. Here, our surface area of diffusion um, is going to be very limited, looking at the entire volume of the cell. Here, it's going to be much more extensive. And this is why cells are small. To put this in perspective of a high surface area to volume ratio, kind of thinking biologically, elephant's ears, or in this case, the rabbit's ears, are used for cooling. High surface area to volume ratio, meaning heat's very easy to exchange. You may notice the heat sink curve. Um, we've got airfoils here on computers or in um, certain mechanics. This is increasing the surface area to allow heat to escape. A radiator in a car does the same thing. All of these four examples have a very high surface area to volume ratio. In contrast to that, items have a very low surface area to volume ratio used for heat retention. Whales, um, pretty large structure, not a lot of folds, very smooth skin, limiting the amount of contact they have. Polar bears are living in a cold environment, and penguins uh, all huddling together here, reducing the total amount of exposed um, surface area to kind of keep that heat in and more efficiently. Lastly, there's a couple links here. Again, looking at some other um, available resources for you. It all comes back to cells being small to allow them to be able to diffuse nutrients, and that occurs through a very high surface area to volume ratio.